Hello everyone, welcome to FA Learning. Today I am going to continue a design approach part 2. The first video was uploaded last week. So this is the continuation of that. So I would recommend you guys to, uh, to watch that video first. The link of those videos are in the description or you can check on my FPA channel and then come to these videos. If you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe so that you can get the latest update on various FA topics. Now let's begin with the design approach part 2. Okay, as we discussed in the previous class, we discussed about the density area curve, right? We read the curve and we talk about pipe schedule method, hydraulic calculation method and various uh, rules and regulations are required as for NFPA 13 uh, chapter 19 right so today I'm just going to talk about the area adjustment curve right? density area adjustment curve right so mostly we can we have to add uh, in the density areas some additional areas or we can reduce also based on different scenarios right so these are the four scenarios as for NFPA 13 uh, chapter 19 so those we have to uh, uh, we have to adjust as for our design areas right so let's begin with now so all the design areas the one we are going to apply here are based on this curve right let's say uh, for for the light hazard we have minimum 1500 square feet right and uh, for the ordinaries we have 1500 square feet for ordinary 2 also we have 1500 square feet with different densities right 0 0.1 0 0.15 and 0 0.20 and for extra hazard 1 and 2 we have minimum to 2000 sorry 230 square meter or 2500 square square feet right so uh, how we have to add or reduce based on this area that we are going to see today right Okay, so if we have dry system, as for NFP 19.3.2.2.5, we have to add 30% external, 30% extra. You know, because we know that uh, dry system above the uh, dry valve, we have air or nitrogen and below we have water, right? So in order to open the valve, we need to uh, release the air from that one. That will only happen in case of the fire. The heat from the fire will go and it will activate the sprinkler causing the air to release first and then water to go inside the upstream of inside, sorry, inside the uh, pipe above the dry pipe, uh, dry valve, right? So by doing that one, you know, it takes some time, right? It takes some time that we have designed our fire areas Let's say uh, this is this is a dry system for light hazard and we have designed for 1500 square feet as for the light hazard but by the time uh, air release and water enters inside the pipe and main to the sprinkler at that where there is a fire maybe the size of the fire will grow right the size of the fire will grow and we know that we have designed our system based on the certain areas right certain hydraulic design remote areas and if the fire grows higher than that one a sprinkler system cannot control the fire right we know that the sprinkler system are mainly to control the fire and in order to add those 30 percent we want to make sure that you know uh, our pressure and flow are sufficient to uh, fight the fire uh, almost uh, 30 percent additional based on our design areas and we have to select our flow capacities based on that right so this is for the dry system second one we have for the slope ceiling for that we have to add 30 percent this is as for 1933-24 because in the slope ceiling we have a we have chances you know the fire will go off uh, up at the peak right and mostly like this so this is our slope you know and suppose we have a windows here right and the fire start at this location right now we know that and we know that when first take or by one effect the fire the the heat or air as gas will go try to go upstairs right up into the peak so it might go in these areas in order to uh, it should go in these areas to activate this sprinkler in case of the fire but this air will rise up to the peak and it will activate the sprinkler in those areas right so we need a fire we need 
water in these areas but the springer discharges far away from that because of that again the size of uh, again the size of uh, the areas we need to increase based on uh, this uh, this curve right so uh, if you don't know uh, what is the slope ceiling so it is mostly around uh, this is based on the fm global uh, research that if it is more than 16 points seven percent or for each uh, 12 uh, run 12 unit run and if we have two unit rise right so this is our slope so for each 12 go horizontal we have to uh, in vertical direction if it is more than that or 16.7 percent we consider it as slope ceiling right the next one we have high temperature sprinkler right in the high temperature sprinkler, you can see the text here I have included in green because here we can deduct 25 percent as for 1933-26 right for the high temperature sprinkler, we can deduct uh, 25 percent because in the fact we know that a mostly high sprinkler system high temperature sprinkler system you know uh, it will uh, uh, it will uh, activate less numbers of sprinkler compared to the ordinary temperature sprinklers keeping that in mind we can reduce 25 percent from our design density areas as for our requirement right the last one we have quick response is sprinkler right so here we have to uh, we have to deduct based on the ceiling height right 193323 three talks about the quick response with the ceiling height right so uh, let's talk about uh, that in a moment uh, before I will just uh, talk about the first three right so multiple adjustments are possible right uh, we can apply we can add we can deduct and still uh, we can uh, we can see that one okay so let's say for one example for this how we have to adjust our areas right let's say uh, we are designing a project for light hazard occupancies right we see the graph it is 139 square meter and if that light hazard is a dry pipe system we have a penalties for 30 percent as i discussed in the in a while so the fire size will grow so we have to add 30 percent there so now our design area is not 139 square meter it is 180 square meter based on area adjustment curve right is the area adjustment procedure the second example here is for extra hazard occupancies, right? 279 square meter. We know mostly we use high temperature in extra hazard occupancies, right? So if we have used high temperature instead of ordinary temperature in sprinkler, we have to add 25%. Sorry, we have to uh, remove, we have to, if we can decrease 25%, right? This is, we have a credit. So 279 square meter is for extra hazard occupancies as for this graph, right? suppose for example we have considered that one we can reduce further that one to minus 25 percent right so minus 25 percent of 279 we can reduce further and we can get 209 square meter right so this is our uh, this is our uh, adjustment for we this is how we can reduce the design areas based on different scenarios right and you know we have multiple adjustment also it is possible for example our hazard this extra hazard and we need to add we need to consider 232 square meter for our design areas the hydraulic must remote areas and if that is dry system we have to add 30 percent so now we have 302 instead of 232 and if that is being is high temperature right so minus 25 percent so the last final areas we need to consider is 227 square meter in our in our uh, 227 square meter in our calculation and for that area only we need flow and pressure in order to uh, fight the fire right and as i uh, as i discussed the last one here it is for the quick response sprinkler as for 193323 right so here we have a curve right and this curve on the x-axis we have the ceiling in the feet ceiling height in the feet and the y-axis the percentage reduction in a all the way from 10 to 40 right so this curve this graph only apply uh, for a ceiling height of 6.1 meter right so we have some condition with the quick response sprinkler let's discuss just con condition first before coming to this one right the first one this is only applicable to wet sprinkler system right and 
light or OS hazard occupancies. So we cannot use that for the X hazard occupancies. The, six, the third one, the maximum ceiling height need to be 6.1 meter in order to uh, get dose reduction. And we don't have any unprotected ceiling pockets, right? Uh, ceiling pockets mostly uh, those need to be protected with the sprinkler system. Uh, how, uh, how we have to uh, include the sprinkler in the ceiling pockets? In fact, that is a matter of uh, my maybe coming videos. We'll discuss how, what is the requirement of the ceiling packet the sprinkler and all. And the uh, last one, we don't need to have unprotected area above cloud ceilings, right? So these are the five criteria we need to meet in order to get a use of this curve right so this curve talk about you know uh, on the x-axis ceiling in the feet on the y-axis design areas uh, deduction in uh, percentage right so if and these are the some of the nodes and the figure which we have to use so if our ceiling height is less than 10 feet right we can reduce 40 percent to our width pipe speaker system right and if it is higher than 6.1 then we don't have any option to uh, reduce the area in fact the area need to be as for design area curve we, we don't do anything only we can apply if the ceiling height is between 3 meters to 6.1 meter we can apply these formulas right and we can come to some of the percentage in the values and you can see we have two formulas for reduction the first one is for us customer units and the second one for SI units, right? So let's take one example so that we can have a uh, uh, look to that one, right? So mostly for ceiling height greater than 10 feet and less than 20 feet between these two values, we can use this formula minus 3x by 2 plus 55 where x is the ceiling height. So let's use the formulas here for uh, the quick response sprinkler. Let's say our ceiling height is 15 feet, right? And we can use US customary units in the feet to get how much we can reduce that one, right? So X is equals to 15 feet, right? And put the values, we come to a value of 32.5%, right? So uh, we can go up to something around this one, right? 32.5%, yeah? So our reduction areas for this application is 32.5 this is how we have to read this uh, read this graph and apply our knowledge scales to you know to to uh, uh, select our best fire pumps for, for pump sizing to reduce the cost at the same time it is reliable and effective to control the fire right okay that's all about today videos i hope you have learned something from this one and if you have any question uh, you can contact me through various channels here right you can uh, contact me on LinkedIn, on Facebook, uh, whichever is convenient to you, right? And last, you know, this kind of the reduction areas, uh, what, what I have seen that most of the designers or the contractor, they forget to apply this one, you know, but in case if you are uh, designing your sphincter system effectively and, you know, uh, 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 based on a professional manner, you can reduce the cost of the fire pump, storage of water, pumping capacities and everything because you know this is allowed by NFVN which is adopted by various ASJ that we can use to uh, come to our solution with best effective way where we can reduce the cost of the project at the same time it is protected 100% with total efficiency as designed and required to protect the buildings uh, or various occupancies right so if you have any comment you can uh, contact me through this channel and please subscribe my channel so that you can get the latest update on various epi topics so this that's for today i see you next week on saturday